In today's episode, we've got reselling news, a weekly business recap, a quick what sold on eBay. But first, we're going to talk about what I use to record this podcast. Let's get to it. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to another episode of Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips. My name is Ryan. If this is your first time here at the channel, welcome. This channel is generally all about the flip life. I am a full-time reseller working out of my home here in the greater Cincinnati area, and we'll talk about reselling life, what's going on in the wider world of reselling, what I'm buying and selling, and all that kind of good stuff. But one of the most common questions that I get is, what am I using to record this podcast and these YouTube videos? So I thought I would just share a, just a few minutes of time and explain what it is that I'm using to shoot these videos and record this podcast. For starters, for video, um, I invested in the Canon EOS M50. Uh, there will be links to all this stuff. They are affiliate links. So if you like any of this equipment, um, feel free to shop away. <laughs> uh, it'll all be down in the description below. But I bought the Canon M50 Creator Kit last year, and I've been really happy with the camera. You can use it also with the Canon EOS web utility as a webcam. So when I'm doing my StreamYard interviews for the longer podcasts on the weekend, that is the camera I'm using. I'm not using kind of a traditional webcam. And that's one of the reasons that my image is pretty crisp. Now, the EOS web utility does not output in HD. In fact, it's not even old school 720 HD. I think with the EOS webcam utility, it is actually only putting out about 576p, but that is still, it's so much sharper and there's so many more pixels available that it just gives a better image than your standard webcam. The rest of the videos I'm recording in 1080p, I've thought about upscaling to 4K, but I just don't see where it's really necessary for this sort of content. So it is a Canon EOS M50. Mine is a Mark I. They recently came out with a Mark II. Uh, again, there will be a link to it below, and I will try to link to some of the other videos where there are some creators who can go a lot more in-depth on this camera than I can. It's basically point and shoot. It autofocus, a couple of quick settings, and boom, you're ready to go. So I've been really, really pleased with it. Uh, I do the creator kit. I don't think is available anymore, but when it was, it actually came with its own microphone, a, a shotgun mic from Rode, which I actually used for a short while. But for the podcast, it just wasn't quite what I was looking for. So I invested in a couple of other pieces of equipment to kind of round this thing out. The first was the Shure SM58. If you're watching on YouTube, the image just popped up. It is a classic vocal microphone. It was originally developed gosh, back in the late 1960s, if I'm not mistaken, and has existed virtually unchanged since then. There are a ton of different mics that you could use. This is what they call an XLR mic. It does require some sort of interface or mixer in order to connect to a computer. And that is this next item, which is the Rodecaster Pro. For a podcast that gets maybe 80 listens an episode and a YouTube channel with 430 odd uh, subscribers. This thing is probably total overkill, <laughs> uh, but it's awesome. It is an absolute joy to use. It is a mixer. It is a uh, interface. It has these great sound pads, which allow me to do all of the different sound effects kind of on the fly. So I can do them just by pressing a button. I don't have to go back in later and add all that stuff in post, which saves me a ton of time when I'm making these videos to be able to just pop those things in there where I need them. So this thing is like 600 bucks, but in combination with that microphone, it gives this podcast and the videos a sound that to me is really, really good. And apparently most of you think so too, because I get a ton of feedback on how good this microphone sounds. I wish it was just the velvety sound of my voice, <laughs> but I'm cheating. I'm using some really pretty good equipment. So I will also link to a channel, uh, Tom Buck, who is the one he did a, uh, he's got a full playlist on the Roadcaster. So if you're interested in how this thing works, he's the guy to go watch. 
he's like I said, he's got a whole playlist on it, probably 11 or 12 videos on different things that you can do with this device. He also did a microphone comparison test where he compares uh, this microphone to several others. And it was his video which prompted me actually to buy this equipment. So if you're interested in more details, go check out Tom Buck's channel. He is a he's a joy to watch. Just one of the most sincere, genuine guys you are ever going to come across. Uh, all about tech, does a really nice job in a, just a really fun way. Just like I said, a super genuine guy. So if you do have more questions on this equipment, definitely go check out his channel. With that. News updates. Let's do a quick reselling news update. There's not much going on since the last time we talked. You've probably already noticed effective January 24th, which was Sunday, the new USPS rates went into effect. So if you were caught out by that, the only thing that caught me out was just scanning it. I didn't download their spreadsheets and dive super deep into it. And I did not see that the media mail rates were going up, but along with everything else, media mail rates went up about 3%, give or take. Uh, so a little bit more money coming out of pocket for shipping. If you're offering free shipping on media, which a lot of us do, I'm still not convinced that I want to undo that just because the competitive marketplace in media is so saturated with people offering free shipping. Uh, but with one more increase, maybe this time next year, that might be something that I will have to look at because it is starting to, uh, eat into the profit margins a little bit. Moving on. Uh, if you have been online at all, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, anywhere, you have seen the Bernie memes with the wonderful mittens that were given to him by, I believe a school teacher who made a handful of these and sold them on Etsy. Uh, there are several articles that one of the big winners of the inauguration was Etsy because of these mittens. They're no longer available. You can't buy them. She hasn't made any more, but she is referring everybody to Etsy where she did have these available for sale and is referring people to other makers who make similar items. So the memes were fantastic, if maybe a little overdone. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was like every 45 seconds, it seemed like there was a new one. Some of them were pretty fantastic. Some of them not so much so, but the mittens clearly were a hit and it has been fantastic for Etsy. It has driven a ton of additional traffic to their site. They were already doing quite well, uh, but that's pretty amazing. So very cool. The only other thing, uh, eBay and PayPal this week, I uh, believe, began sending out their 1099s for tax. Tax time is definitely coming. Uh, there's an article on e-commerce bytes about how eBay handles or does not handle sales tax on 1099s. It's a little unclear exactly how eBay is going to report on your 1099. It looks like from what they have on their site that the sales tax collected is actually going to be included in the 1099 figure that eBay provides to the IRS. So you'll definitely want to work with your CPA or your tax accountant or whoever you've got doing that to be sure you are keeping track of what is actual income for you and what is actual just pass through things like sales tax and so on that you, you may get and then send back, which was the case with PayPal. In the case of eBay, you're not even getting that money. It's not even coming to you. eBay is collecting it directly and submitting it on your behalf. So I'm not quite clear why they would be showing that on your 1099. Uh, but be on the lookout for those. Those should be coming anytime. I know uh, there were several people who commented that last year, many of the 1099s did not match what sellers had been keeping track of themselves. So one of the things, of course, that you'll want to do, and again, I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant, I'm not giving financial or tax advice, but just generally speaking, you'll want to make sure that you do some kind of reconciliation of your books to make sure that if there is a big discrepancy either way between your 1099s and what you're actually going to file on your taxes, that you figure out how you're going to address that in case of an audit. So be aware of that. That is all coming up. Tax time is not too far away. I think we can start filing in early February. So it's coming, folks. It is definitely coming. With that, we are going to take a quick break for our sponsors over on the podcast 
and we'll be right back with a what sold on eBay and the weekly business recap. Stay tuned. All right, so let's have a quick look. I've only got, I think, half a dozen items for us today on the what sold on eBay portion of this. It was not a big week for big items, as we'll see when we get to the actual weekly business recap. Business was pretty good, but it was just one of those weeks where there were lots of tiny little sales and not really too many big ones. First up, uh, this really cool book from 1954, West to Ohio, was published by Antioch Press. Um, the writer actually was from, I believe, Hamilton, Ohio, which is where I live. I had listed this locally, hoping that maybe somebody, a local historian or somebody that's into the local history would be interested in it. As it turned out, that was not the case. This thing went somewhere totally different, uh, but a pretty nice sale. I picked this up in an estate lot for about 50 cents, and it went for $25 with free shipping on a best offer. Another book. This is another one that was from the big lot. So I own this for about a quarter. I actually had two of these, so there's still one left. Lost Battles, Reconstructing the Great Clashes of the Ancient World. Uh, that big lot I've talked about numerous times had a ton of old ancient history type stuff, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, the Phoenicians, and so on. This is another one of those books that covers warfare from that era nice hardcover with dust jacket uh went for 27.99 with free shipping so that's a nice flip from a quarter another book this was from actually a uh a book lot that was mostly romance novels i've talked about that lot before and randomly stuck in that lot was this astronomy for everybody by simon newcomb from 1902 really uh, kind of a cool piece to just kind of flip through and see what the the state of astronomy and the things that we knew or thought we knew in the early 1900s versus where we're at today really cool old book in excellent shape with its dust jacket uh, i think i got about 75 cents in this went for 32.99 with free shipping yet another book this is a fairly recent book this is the book itself is older but this particular version of it is fairly new critical examination of socialism by william malick this is a uh, classics of liberty edition from 1998 some i occasionally talk about these series of kind of book reissues like the lakeside press books this is another one classics of liberty i've had a few of these come in and out of here that i picked up in big lots that i own for 25 to 75 cents and they they go anywhere from 15 to about 40 45 dollars this one went for 34.99 with free shipping the first cd this week actually there were a lot of cds that went out of here this week um but most of them were super super cheap this was the most expensive cd that went out of here uh mc trouble gotta get a grip from 1990 this went for 38.24. I sent out an offer on this for 15% off. So I was asking, I don't know, probably 42 bucks for it, something like that. Uh, someone accepted the offer at 38.24 with free shipping, and this is on its way. And now the flip of the week. This is a really unusual item. So I had, you've probably seen, I've talked about probably a couple times, I have all these old vintage Ohio State football programs listed. And I bought a lot of them for, it worked out to about a dollar a piece. I don't know, I've got 95, 97 of them, something like that when I originally bought them. I recently listed a vintage book called The Big Ten. It's from the late 60s. And I had someone reach out to me on that book and made an offer of $9 and then left me a message that said they were interested in 12 different Ohio State football programs that I had listed. So rather than making offers on all of those i just created a totally new listing for the 13 items that he wanted he offered seven dollars a piece for those ohio state programs i went ahead and just built one lot for those 12 items at seven bucks a piece plus this book for nine dollars which totaled 93 dollars with free shipping i'm into this stuff like i said the 12 programs are probably 12 bucks this book was a quarter so 12 and a quarter turned into 93 dollars free shipping. It costs a little bit to ship this out. Um, 
the, the, the football programs technically don't qualify for media mail because they're sports memorabilia and they have ads in them. So shipping was a little more expensive than I would have liked, but still I've long since made my money on those Ohio state programs, selling them at 12, 15, $20 a piece. So to blow out a dozen of them for seven bucks a piece and get them off the shelf, it was well worth it. And a nice flip of the week. So real quick, last thing this week, the weekly business recap. Like I said, it was actually a pretty good week all in all. I did have one day that I lost totally to a dealer trade drive. So listings were a little bit on the light side again this week. Only 55 listings went up. Not hateful. That's, what is that? If you do a five-day work week, that's 11 a day. So that's not too bad, but I'd really like to be closer to 75 to 100, but we'll take that. Sales for the week, 1386, 86. So again, right in that window where it's consistently been in the 13 to $1,400 range. The breakdown by source, 123338 from eBay, uh, $103.48 from the antique booth that I opened earlier this month. That thing has done actually way better than I anticipated. It's not probably going to be a moneymaker, but barring anything unforeseen in these last handful of days, I think it's going to pay for itself for its first month. Uh, my first month's rent was $147 and some change, and I'm real close to that already. I think I'm at $143 in gross sales, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked with how that thing is going three weeks into it. Uh, the one disappointment is books are not selling very well. I'm doing really well with records, really well with DVDs. Books are nothing. Just, <laughs> I think I've sold five. I took about 600 over there. <laughs> uh, so if you're in the local area, Westchester Antique Center, uh, booth 504. If you're into books, go help me out. Buy some books. <laughs> uh, and the last bit of money uh, this week was $50 from sponsorships and support for the podcast and the YouTube channel. So pretty good all in. Cost of goods sold for the week, just $47.36, which left me with a gross profit margin of 96.59%. So another excellent week in gross profit, $13.39.50. Expenses for the week, uh, pretty straightforward. Advertising, the eBay fees. I, did, I had one PayPal fee for something. Um, I bought some ink for my printer <laughs> uh, and outbound shipping. So pretty straightforward, nothing really extraordinary. Five, 54 and 52 cents, 95% uh, of that was eBay fees and postage. That left me with a net profit for the week of 56.6%. .6%, so pretty solid, 784 and 98 cents, which is a number I would take every single week. So. Obviously, the more the merrier, but anything over 700 is a win in my book, so I'm pretty pleased with how the week has gone. Let me know in the comments, how is your week going? I've seen some sellers talking about weeks kind of being up and down, and a lot of folks took massive, massive returns this month. Uh, I literally have had one return. I take that back. I've had two returns. I had one item that arrived late. Uh, it was a CD somebody wanted to give as a Christmas gift. It didn't arrive until like January 10th. The customer requested to return it. I absolutely went ahead and took that back. And I had a college student who ordered a couple of books on the assassination of JFK. And then apparently his research project changed and he didn't need them anymore. So I went ahead and took those back. So I've only had two returns for January. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Let us know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments below what kind of month you've had in terms of returns and what your sales have looked like. Have they been up and down or are they going pretty well? If you have any specific questions on the equipment that I shared with you at the beginning of this episode, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can leave a, a comment or you can email me at galaxycds at gmail.com and I would be happy to try to answer anything specific. If I don't know the answer, I will refer you again over to Tom Buck. Uh, he probably has explained it in one of his hundreds of tech videos, um, but I'd be happy to, to try to help anybody who has any questions on that equipment. With that, I just got back literally from Louisville where I purchased an entire SUV's worth 
of model train memorabilia and accessories and all kinds of stuff. My living room is currently full of stuff. So I'm going to cut this thing off and go work on that. I hope you're having a great week. And now it's time to sell. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. Thanks for spending a little time with Galaxy CDs, Rocks, and Flips. If you'd like to spend a little more time, there's another video in the upper right-hand corner. If you'd like to spend a lot more time, you can subscribe down below.